Okay, <clears throat> this is uh, the third video now on uh, gas transport and we're looking at the uh, bore shift. So in terms of the uh, learning objectives, we're going to look at number four and number five there. We need to explain the bore shift. Um, okay, and then explain the biological importance uh, of the bore shift. So I'm hoping now that this video will start to uh, bring uh, a few things together for you um, that we've looked at in the previous videos. So um, here's the graph that we're going to be uh, using for this video. Now the in terms of a definition, um, the bore shift is the described as the lowering of hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen in the presence of carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is one thing that can bring about this ball shift. It's not the only thing that can do it, but it's it's what we are going to concentrate on for this uh, video. So if you look at the graph, I've got three curves on the graph there, A, B and C. And um, the graphs, sorry, the curves are moving or being shifted to the right. Now, whenever you get an oxygen dissociation curve plotted more to the right, that tells you the affinity haemoglobin has for oxygen is being lowered. And you can confirm that uh, very simply. If you just choose a partial pressure of oxygen, uh, let's say 10, okay, you go up to the green line and we'll say that the percentage saturation is about 23. If we go so that the green line is the furthest to the right. <clears throat> if we carry on up to the purple line it's 40. And if we carry on up to the black line it's around about 65. Okay. So what that's showing you is as the curve goes further to the right, there's less oxygen bound to the haemoglobin. So that must say that there's been more oxygen dissociation. And that's what's happening. The ball shift is all about carbon dioxide causing oxygen to dissociate from haemoglobin because haemoglobin's affinity for oxygen has lowered. All right. So, why is that biologically important? Well, these curves represent three different conditions that uh, someone can be at. So, A, someone at rest, B, walking, C, running. So, I think it's obvious to say that those three different types of activity require different levels of energy. So if you're at rest, that's a sort of low energy demand. When you're walking, you require a bit more energy because you're using muscles more and you're, you're walking. Okay. When you're running, that requires a lot of energy because you're using your muscles more. They're contracting more. Um, so energy in a human is ATP and ATP is made by aerobic respiration and what's needed for aerobic respiration of course is oxygen and this is why the ball shift is so important because it links the demand for oxygen with the level of carbon dioxide and what links the demand for oxygen and the amount of carbon dioxide is aerobic respiration and the amount of aerobic respiration that's occurring 
depends on your physical activity. Okay, so if we go to this uh, top table, uh, there's the physical activity. I've described it as low, medium and high for A, B and C. Rate of aerobic respiration, low, medium and high. Oxygen requirement, low, medium and high. And percentage saturation of haemoglobin with oxygen at the unloading uh, tension. So remember now, the unloading tension is um, uh, what causes 50% saturation. Okay, so if you look at that, for curve A, the unloading, um, the, the percentage saturation, sorry, is 50%. If you go to um, curve B, all right, it's uh, 27. And if you look at line C, it's uh, 13. So that clearly shows that as someone becomes more physically active, there's less oxygen bound haemoglobin. So there's been more oxygen dissociation and the reason for that is that the body needs the oxygen to do more respiration so last table haemoglobin's affinity for oxygen you can see that it's the lowest for curve c all right and because the curve c shows the greatest physical activity it shows the greatest aerobic respiration it's got the greatest demand for oxygen, but it also is what produces the most carbon dioxide. So when you do more aerobic respiration, the CO2 uh, concentration increases. That lowers the affinity haemoglobin has for oxygen. So more oxygen dissociates or oxygen more readily dissociates. So this table here, uh, I hope, shows important links between physical activity, respiration, oxygen requirements, and so on. Okay, the, um, the next table is looking at um, a bit more detail about the CO2. Okay, so I've already mentioned that the more respiration you do, which is curve C in this case, the higher the CO2 levels. Now, what's important is that, and uh, this is something we'll look at in the next video, um, yes, CO2, we say, is, is producing this Bohr effect, but more technically, um, it's actually a change in pH. So what you've got to remember is that carbon dioxide is an acidic uh, gas. All right. Now, what it does is that when it's made, it actually dissolves in water to produce something called carbonic acid, H2CO3. Now, like I say, that's something we'll look at in the next video. So you could get a question that looks at changes in pH rather than changes in CO2 concentration. But they are linked. All right. So the lower the CO2 level, uh, the... Um, higher the pH so it's more alkali 7.9 is just alkali as you produce more CO2 uh, the pH lowers and the uh, acidity uh, increases okay so 6.5 is just in the uh, acid uh, range there OK, so always try and think about carbon dioxide and how it relates to pH. OK, now the next thing I've got body temperature here. Now, I said that CO2 is not just the only thing that causes the ball shift. Uh, another thing is temperature. All right. So <clears throat> if you are exercising, um, your muscles generate heat. And that extra heat can also lower haemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. All right. So that's just something to consider as well. There are other things, 
Um, but as long as you know about CO2, that's the main one that can uh, lower hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. Okay, so I hope that video made a bit more sense. Um, it's looking at the uh, oxygen association curves moving to the right, which means hemoglobin has a lower affinity, so that means there's less oxygen bound to the hemoglobin, which means oxygen is dissociating from the hemoglobin more readily. Okay. Right, so in the next video, we're going to look at uh, how carbon dioxide is transported. And in that video, we'll look a little bit more at how it causes a reduction in hemoglobin's affinity uh, for oxygen.